Hi, I'm Rhett Jesse, and today we're going to talk about the Metrix 5580 signal conditioner and the SW5580 switch. This is part five in a five part series. We're going to talk about some special reset functions. And the first one is rod drop. And the second one will be impact. For the rod drop exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in an MX2033 signal that's simulating, that we're simulating looking at a rod that's going back and forth. And we're going to look at both its position and vibration. On the impact demonstration, we use an SA6200A to measure the crosshead. So that's a different demonstration. So this is the first of those two parts. And geared toward reciprocating compressors. I said we're going to use an MX2033 going into channel one, and we're gonna measure position on channel one and vibration on channel two. The trick to raw drop is we don't wanna just see the position change where we measure. We wanna extend that using similar triangles to where we see the actual piston rod or the piston change within the cylinder. And we wanna see the rider band wear. So that's what we're going to do in this exercise. And we're gonna do that with our software. So when we go to the rod drop tab, you can see the diagram of the piston and the cylinder. And what we need to do is measure some critical distances from the wrist pin to the measurement point and from the wrist pin to the rider bands or the center of the rider bands within the cylinder. And that has to be when the piston is farthest away from the crankshaft. That's when we get those distances. So we want to measure L1, which is the distance from the wrist pin to the measurement point, and L2, which is the distance from the wrist pin to the rider bands. If we have those distances, we can put them in. Today, we're going to simulate those distances, and we're going to say L1 is 50 inches. I can do this in metric units just as well. And L2 is 100 inches. So the L2 over 1 ratio is a factor of 2. And I happen to have measured my gap voltage before we started, and it's at 9 volts gap. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 9 volts in. And then I'm going to enable the system, and it will tell us that we're going to use similar triangles, and we're going to be multiplying our displacement units by a factor of 2 in this case, since I, that's our ratio of L1 over L2. And I do that, and since I put 9 volts in, we have 0 offset. If I have 10 mils of wear, I would put in 8 or 10 volts, but I'm putting in nine, but if I already knew what the wear was, I could basically put in the right voltage to get the amount of wear I have now, and then we could see the future wear. So now what we want to do is say, okay, hey, we've got this set up properly. Let's look at our relays. Our relays are now the rod drop multiplier. So instead of having plus or minus eight, we have plus or minus 16. You can change that. And then for the uh, danger, instead of plus or minus 20, I change it to plus or minus 24. Now, when I change the position uh, on the shaker, when I move it by 10, that's actually multiplied by two because we want to see the rider band wear. So these alert and danger settings that you see in the software, they're going to be met when I hit eight and 12 mils. So I'm going to exceed those. I'm going to go to uh, 10, we'll go to 20, then we'll go to 20 mil gap. And because we're multiplying it by two, we'll get these alarms. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. Let me go ahead and uh, turn on my voltmeters. And so that way you can see those as well. On the one over here to the far left, that's measuring the milliamps coming out of channel one, and then we have the milliamps on vibration coming out of channel two, uh, and those make sense. And then for our relays, we're looking at the relays on channel one, that's the rod drop channel, and you can see that they're both open now, they have OL, overload. When they go shut, you'll see them go to a short circuit, so we'll, we'll see that. So I'm going to change the gap by 10 mils, and we should see the alert relay change state three after the three second time delay which we do it's flashing yellow and we can see that uh, the relay shorted okay so it's zero ohms and we can see that the milliamps changed the vibration didn't change but the position did change it's what we expect to see happen 
Let's go ahead and change it another 10 mils. And remember, it's multiplied by two, so now we're at 40 mils of change. And we see now we're flashing red, and that's what we expect. We saw both the alert and the danger come in. The danger is latched, so when I decrease the amount of rider band wear, or you know the amount of raw drop, I'll go back to 10. That alarm doesn't clear, and it won't clear until I hit reset. So I'll hit reset now, and we should still go into alert because we're still uh, 20. We have 20 mils of gap. So. In this exercise, what I've been able to show is that we were able to extend the readings from where we're measuring to where we're actually measuring inside where we're getting the rider band wear inside the cylinder. And we did that with similar triangles. And it worked pretty effectively. I'll go ahead and move this back to zero and we'll, it will the alarm will clear just because we don't we no longer have any rider band wear and it was non-latching, so that's what you expect to happen. So the system worked very well in a raw drop application, and you notice that the vibration level really didn't change because we weren't affecting vibration. We were just affecting that position change. Thank you very much.